uh, which ultimately leads to the dynamism in workspace. Um, so the key word for all of us in today's workplace and, as, uh, and especially for us architects is uh, to transform that collaboration, the spirit of collaboration in a creative manner into our workspaces. When we talk about the future of workspace, the most important buzzword that is on these days is the Internet of Things. Uh, it is a little daunting, but uh, what it basically is, is a strategy or a way to bring together disparate modes of monitoring, uh, uh, data collecting, analyzing, and putting it together, uh, putting the data together in innovative ways to analyze the operation and uh, the efficiency and the betterment of the workplaces. Uh, in a sense, today's presentation is not going to be about this. A lot of people have spoken in a lot of depth about data-driven design, all this data that we're capturing uh, through cameras and sensors of various sort, going through mechanisms and algorithms in uh, complex control panels and, uh, you know, studied by different people, leading to different uh, interpretations in terms of efficiencies, energy efficiencies, utilization of space, better health. What we're really talking about today is the focus of accentuating experience as the future of the workspace. Uh, we believe that there is such a thing as timeless design, uh, which we try to achieve in all our projects. So our effort is not to thrust technology in the face of our clients and to show them that we are with the times. It is to humanize the technology and introduce it in subtle ways to the people who will eventually be using our workspaces. The traditional way of looking at the office was entering into a public zone and then moving into a secure area where you had all the functions and activities of that organization. One of the ways in which the industry, as well as we, are uh, turning that on its head is to bring out all the amenities and the semi-public activities of that organization and put it at the interface of the public and the access controlled areas. We are essentially saying that this workplace is not only for the people who are working here anymore. It could be for your friends, it could be for visitors, it could even be for families. And we are encouraging that kind of a mix of functions and activities across a lot of our projects, not just in uh, corporate interior design, but also on our master planning projects and architectural projects. This is um, the Living Workplaces um, a matrix uh, created by one of the leading manufacturers of seating workstation and furniture solutions, Herman Miller. And the reason we have included this in this presentation is it captures in a, uh, the essence of today's workplace uh, in a beautiful way. Uh, today's workplace is about chatting, conversing, co-creating, huddle spaces, showing and telling. It's about warming up and cooling down before and after meetings. It's about understanding the process behind everything we do, not just blindly following what is happening. It's about contemplating, not just responding to targets and deadlines and timelines and submissions, but contemplating about the meaning of what we do. And ultimately, the reason we all exist is to create something that is memorable and unique and different and impactful. And when we distill all of these activity patterns, what we see as essential components or essential drives of today's workplace is the idea of concentration, the idea of responding to a context. We're not very big on creating a cookie cutter IT building which has fancy colors and graphics thrown around across multiple floors with slides in it. We believe that there should be a sense of gravitas that each design brings and that heavily responds to the context, the sense of collaboration, and uh, the idea that while everything can be uh, open and interrelated and collaborative, there is also a respect for uh, activities which need to be quiet, confidential, and often uh, more contemplative. So um, the transformation in the workplace has, uh, uh, has been from the cubicle culture of the uh, 70s and the 80s to what was called as the open office. A lot of places still believe in open office. An open office is nothing but, but the cubicles with the walls removed. And um, it's, it's still, uh, it, it's, it's a way to pat robots on the shoulder saying that, hey, you can look at each other now. Uh, there have been reports um, that the open office is actually counterproductive um, to the efficiency because a lot of feel, people feel distracted. They feel uh, like they're still sitting among an ocean of workers 
on the floor. So our push and indeed the transformation across in the past few years has been towards a neighborhood or a landscape approach to designing workspaces, which is to say that it's not a sea of workplaces. It respects the privacy, uh, but it also respects the needs of the community. Um, and indeed, we are not, uh, we are not excelling uh, solely, we are excelling socially. And that's where the idea of the neighborhood comes in. Uh, the, where you enter is where you create the context of the workplace. That's where you have your first branding moment. That's where you create a sense of identity, not just for people who are working there, but also for people who are coming. Uh, you have diverse zones for uh, focused working, but also collaborative spaces. But you also have concentrated, quiet zones for people to shut themselves off from some of the drama and get some work done. These are some examples of projects we have done where we have explored with that diversity of spaces. Uh, you have more formal meeting rooms and stuff, but also you have thrown into that um, mix of workstations and sea of workstations some places where people can take a st step back, take a breath, uh, collaborate, recharge, and then go back to create something different. A lot of this uh, falls back on certain anthropological ideas of who humans are. Uh, we we uh, evolved as hunter-gatherers and tribesmen, and we find a sense of intimacy and uh, connection with people in groups of 16 to 20 people, and sometimes a group larger than that is just a lot of noise. And uh, a working environment which celebrates that volume of people often tends to miss out on the importance of the individuals and the identities of the groups within that. And uh, it is for this reason that all our projects uh, today uh, respect the need of the individual and the identity of the group. Uh, one of the projects that you see over here on the lower right-hand side is, uh, is a project we did for a startup called InShots. It's, um, it's a mobile app which converts uh, news articles into 60 words or less. And the brief given to us by the founders, who are three IIT dropouts, are like, hey, we were hostelites. We used to miss our home. A lot of the people who work with us are also from the same background. They've either dropped out or they're young and they aspire to do something great. And so they've joined us early. So we don't want them to miss home. Can you design an office for us which is home? So the reception is the waiting room. The cafeteria is designed as the dining area. The meeting rooms are um, thrown in between a collection of shelves where each employee has brought in something of value from their childhood uh, or their home and kept and decorated the interiors of the office. So the office becomes a collection of memories by all the people who are working there. There is also the angle of ethnography. Um, there is a lot of talk about world-class design contemporary global aesthetic. What does this all mean? And what does this all mean to the person who's working there? Uh, we are not trying to create something which is standardized. We are trying to create something that's unique. So the idea of culture and the idea that no matter what your, the social context of your city is, is it crowded? Are you coming by metro? Uh, or are you coming by the local? Are you going to be tired by the time you get to office? So the office space reacts to uh, compensate for some of that, and we counterbalance some of the social issues depending on the place we uh, design in by creating a space which responds appropriately to the way in which the people arrive. There's a lot of focus on oral uh, tradition in our culture, and this is something which translates in our designs as a lot of collaborative spaces. Elbow room, lots of place for people to warm up and cool down after meetings. The focus of our designs is uh, the, the tapri or the katta or the, where people have seen the cities where stories are made in the city and this is something we translate to our designs in the interiors and other workplaces as well. I've already spoken about the culture of tribes. One of the big pushes we're doing and we worked with uh, some experts like Kamal Mittal is to bring real breathing plants and a lot of fresh daylight into our workspaces. Uh, initially, we faced a lot of challenge with clients who felt that maintenance will be an issue. We found that it's a very lazy excuse uh, from a client to say that maintenance is the reason why we cannot have plants. A plant, even a money plant, uplifts your spirit so much. Uh, imagine working in an office which has breathing plants. The quality of air, the, qu the warmth uh, that the interior space gives is just refreshing. So that's something that we're pushing for. 
um, more than more than uh, 15 years ago, uh, we uh, we got a project to demolish the old Voltas factory in Thane and build something new and upscale for uh, Tata Consultancy Services. We uh, told the client that we would respectfully decline to do that and we'd do an adaptive reuse of the factory sheds and convert them into workspaces. Back then it was something radical and different where you had full factory height sheds and you had people sitting in uh, you know, clusters and working with full height trees growing inside. Uh, now it's become something aspirational that uh, people are pitching to their clients about. So this is, this is the way in which we are trying to bring the future into the workspace now and even back then. The other thing, and uh, this is an example of a project we did for the Jindals. Uh, the Jindals are um, one of our legacy clients and Sangeeta Jindal is one of the largest um, collectors of art in India. They have one of the largest private art collections. The question we ask on their projects is can a workplace be a museum? or can a museum be a workplace? So this is the JSD, JSW center on the right in uh, Bandra Kurla complex. And then uh, on the left, the two images are from the JSW mansion on Pedder Road. And both office spaces have been visualized as being museums. The, the use of the material, the muted color palette, the use of lighting, um, and all the top artists uh, of our country have displayed their work over there. A few more, uh, a few more images. Uh, from these projects. JSW Mansion on Pedder Road is a grade two heritage building, which means we could not do anything to, that will affect the exterior of the building. On the inside, it's a completely different atmosphere. We also work hard with the organizations. We also work hard with the organizations uh, and understand their branding and vision needs uh, and kind of make that as an important aspect of the entry experience. I'll skip these. Um, just two more minutes. In the beginning, we spoke about humanizing technology. One of the big things we're doing is we're not shoving technology down the throats of the users and the clients as a way to start working on the projects. This is something we've tried to do internally, internally in our organization as well. We've tried to understand the work pattern of the people who are doing, and we're developing mobile application which will intuitively let people plan their days. Our effort has always at Edifice has been to help our employees strike a work-life balance. And we are working um, through solutions like this uh, to help people plan their entire work day on the way to work and plan their entire next day on the way back home so that once they're out of office, they have their time to spend with the family. And that is what we think the future office is. It's, everyone talks about working from home. But in a sense, the future office is going to be home. It's going to be less about work, more about life, more about health, more about productivity and creativity. Thank you.